Okay, number six asks us to find the limit as x approaches zero of tan x over seven x. And if we start by just doing a quick analysis of direct substitution, we'll see that we're gonna end up getting zero over zero, which means we need to try something else. So what I'm gonna use here is the quotient identity, which tells us that um, tangent is sine over cosine. And at the same time, I'm gonna pull this fraction apart a little bit just to reorganize it. Okay, so in our first rewrite, I've taken the seven in the denominator and really cast it aside, making it one seventh. I've taken the x in the denominator and also pushed that off to the side. And I took tangent and using the quotient identity, rewrote that as sine over cosine. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is a little bit uh, bizarre and maybe you wouldn't have thought to do it yourself, but that's why I'm showing it to you. We wanna get what we have written down to look like one of these special trig limits. So I'm keeping my eye on this guy right here. And for, for us to use that, it has to say sine of x over x. And we have a sine of x on the top, and we have an x in the denominator, but it's not one over the other. But that's a quick fix. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two elements and I'm just gonna switch them around. So I'm gonna do another rewrite. Okay, believe it or not, we're almost finished here. I'm now at the point where I'm gonna take the limit, which is to substitute zero in for every occurrence of x. Well, certainly nothing happens with the 1 7th, so I'll just rewrite that. Now, if I plug zero into this x right here, I have the cosine of zero, which is one, so the whole second fraction becomes one. And then when I plug zero into this, it becomes our special trig limit. And the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is one. So in the end, we're just left with an answer of 1 7th. Okay, our final example is find the limit as x approaches zero of x squared over tan squared x. Again, if we started using direct substitution by inserting zero in for every occurrence of x, we'd end up with zero over zero, which would mean we had to try something else. So I'm gonna to try to rewrite this in a slightly different way so that we can use one of these rules. Hopefully by this time, you're getting used to the idea of taking a fraction and pulling it apart to better or to more easily turn it into one of these special trig limits. It's something that students aren't initially very comfortable with. It takes a little bit of practice. In this rewrite, I have split the fraction apart and now I'm, gonna fo I'm focusing on this one over tan squared x. Using the reciprocal relationship, I know that one over tan squared is really cotangent squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another rewrite. Now, if I, if I were to do the direct substitution now, it, it would still not be good because the cotangent of zero is undefined and zero squared is zero and undefined times zero, well, what does that even mean? So I'm actually gonna use the uh, quotient identity again here. I know that cotangent of x is cosine over sine, so cotangent squared x is cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, this still isn't looking like anything up top, but maybe it's getting a little bit closer. I'm gonna do one more step here. Watch very carefully and see if you can figure out what I'm doing. Okay, just to go over what I did there, the cosine squared x on the top, I essentially left that alone. I split x squared into x times x, and I split sine squared into sine times sine. Now, what we have over here, let's choose a different color here. Um, this is the special trig limit, but it's upside down. The thing is though, since it equaled one, if you turn it upside down, it's still one. So we're ready to do the evaluation here by plugging in zero for every occurrence of x. Now the cosine of zero is one and one squared is one. So we have one from that. X over sine x is just the special trig limit, but turned upside down, so it's still one. And then we repeat that again. So the final answer for this one is the number one. So in this video clip, hopefully you've learned what these uh, two special trig limits are, and you might be given them explicitly, but you might have to manipulate what you're given to get it to look like that. Your, your first line of defense is always to do direct substitution, because it might work, but if it doesn't, then you're gonna have to do some of these modifications to use one of these special trig limits.